Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans and you're watching the John Cedars channel from The Bunker and this is a video I never thought I would need to make but we need to talk about Toni Morris again I'm afraid because if you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this you'll know that finding a governing body and actually being able to interact with them personally is almost impossible. In all of my years of doing this channel I've managed it once and we were thinking if we find some pants that are maybe too tight or some yoga pants <laughs> should we get in touch with you and let you know no <laughs> talk to the branch committee <laughs> the branch committee uh, and don't and, let and me maybe... see don't let me see you guys wearing them well and i was are I you was serious well... you, you pull, you're pulling my leg well, well, what if we find your your pants and your pants are a bit too tight? Should we? Then you must have you must have shrunk them. <laughs> so that was a clip from my prank call with Tony Morris. I managed to get hold of his number when they were still in Brooklyn, and um, knowing that I wouldn't be able to have a serious conversation without him hanging up, I I just thought I'd rib him a little bit. But it's very difficult to have that sort of conversation with. A governing body member whether you're an apostate like me or not especially now they're in warwick it's even harder to have a chance encounter with someone who claims to be um part of god's channel with eight and a half million jehovah's witnesses it's almost impossible so you can imagine my surprise when yesterday i had an email from someone saying you will never guess who i ran into at my local liquor store and I managed to document it. So I needed to find out more. An email exchange ensued. I managed to get the video footage on condition that I disguise the man's voice. So without further ado, here it is. I, I see you're a fan of scotch. Do you know anything about Irish whiskey? Yeah. I'm not a lot. My wife likes it. Yeah. Jameson's always. Yeah. I pop off. I usually get I usually get Bushnells, but I you know I don't know anything about these you know yeah. newer ones you know. Yeah. But Jameson's been good for a long time. Yeah. This one I don't know, but hey, it's nice to just. Best them out tasting. Yeah. Yeah, but I've been to Scotland All right. a number of times, so I just... Well, well thank you. Scottish and Irish, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of the Irish ones will say, yeah. you got to try our stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. I know I've had the green spot that's very nice. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just, I'll just go with... The, I'll just go with another, bo another bottle of JMO. <laughs> you can't go wrong with it. My wife really likes that. Yeah, have a good one. So what an astonishing bit of footage. I think it's safe to say that that is not how Tony Morris would like to be seen 
by Jehovah's Witnesses. I think Tony Morris is more accustomed to Jehovah's Witnesses seeing him like this. Welcome to this month's broadcast. Here are a few highlights of what we'll enjoy on the program. Chickens and Hawks was the second article. It warned about homosexual men who prey on and advocate the right to use boys for sex. Shame on them. It is one thing to work on a job with others and quite another matter to immerse oneself in an institution of learning. If your hands are not clean because you've been out warning, then they have blood on them and you're gonna lose your life. So this is it. At this point, we're confident to share with you Russia and its allies are the king of the north. Jehovah blesses obedience. This is a theocracy ruled by God, not a collection of man-made decisions. This is governed from heaven. And yet, for all that arrogance and judgmentalism and pomposity, wouldn't you know, our boy Tony is just a normal guy after all, who you could argue, and I've repeatedly argued, is entirely unworthy of the attention and adoration that's lavished on him. Here is a guy who can get caught out wandering round a booze store at 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning, which is when this was recorded. Now, before going into this in too much detail, because there, there's plenty of detail I can share with you, it would probably be best to go straight to an email from the guy who recorded this because he if he provided lots of background it says so here is the play-by-play -play. I entered the store without my cell phone intending to buy a bottle of Irish whiskey I was completely surprised to see him and even doubted at first that it was him I left the store and returned with my phone the frames as I approached him show his cart with about a dozen bottles of Macallan scotch. Very pricey in the States. The red boxes in the cart are the Macallan cut. We chatted a bit. I bought a bottle of cheap whiskey that apparently his wife approves of. I also have two more videos of him at the register and loading it into his Cadillac which we've seen. My impression was that he has done this many times before. He removed the bottles from their boxes before going to the register, a security protocol at this store. Also, he had them throw away the individual boxes, which to me shows that he wasn't purchasing them as gifts. I left feeling kind of sad for him, someone at the helm of a billion dollar publishing concern out alone on a Sunday morning buying a ton of expensive scotch. Then I thought how the rank and file are actually the ones funding this soiree and how he doesn't miss an opportunity to make them feel bad for not doing more. I hope you can include this in your videos at some point. I did. I really enjoy your viewpoints and would love to see your take on this. P.S. Why isn't he at a meeting or in service at 11 a.m. on a Sunday? That is an interesting question. Um, because bear in mind, I checked where this liquor store is. And it's actually the Bottle King store on, let's see, Bottle King on Route 17 in Ramsey, New Jersey, which I've checked. It's a 23-minute drive out from the Warwick headquarters and my contact tells me that there's plenty of liquor stores in and around the headquarters within a short drive but for some reason he wanted to drive out that distance um, to this particular store to buy what we're going to find is very expensive whiskey but he was doing all this on a Sunday morning so while he was wandering around a booze store up and down the eastern seaboard there were congregations or there are congregations who would have been at their kingdom halls attending the public talk or sitting through the watchtower study it's a very odd state of affairs that while they were doing that 
a man they look upon as part of the faithful and discreet slave was in a booze store stocking up on very expensive scotch whiskey. And you might ask, well, how expensive? Well, um, my contact, again, he managed to catch uh, very briefly a still of the contents of the shopping cart. And he says that there were six bottles of Macallan cut and six bottles of Macallan 12-year. This is single malt Scotch whiskey. And I actually went on the Booze King website because I wanted the most accurate price possible. Uh, th these are whiskies that are apparently on offer at the moment. <clears throat> the 12-year is priced at 52 99 a bottle making six bottles $317.94 the Macallan cut is priced at $89.99 on sale per bottle making six bottles of that $539.94 so for the 12 bottles in question and bear in mind it looks to me as though there's more than just those bottles in the shopping cart the single malt comes to $857.88. Now, I think it's important to say at this point that we don't know why he was buying the whiskey. Despite what my contact says, we can't be certain of who the whiskey was intended for. All we know for sure is that at around 11 a.m. yesterday on Sunday, Tony Morris was buying 12, at least 12 bottles of very, very expensive single malt. And the bare minimum I think you can ask is, well, first of all, that's an odd activity for a governing body member on a Sunday morning. But second of all, does it really have to be that expensive? And in that quantity, you know, one bottle, okay, two bottles, mm, okay. 12 very odd uh, and and where's the 850 dollars coming from you could argue but more than anything what really hits me when i watch this footage is i see it a sad man waddling around in sneakers and a trench coat and a flat cap in the pouring rain outside the liquor store in new jersey on a sunday morning who is just is just a normal guy who may have a, a some kind of alcohol problem we don't know but he's definitely definitely unworthy of the adoration and veneration that he goes out looking for and isn't it ironic that if it weren't for the fact that he and his colleagues have put themselves front center with JW Broadcasting and with the numerous videos that get put out featuring them on a yearly basis. I mean, before 2014, you could argue, it was almost unheard of to see them. I, I can remember growing up and not knowing what the governing body looked like because you only got the occasional um, mugshots in the publications. But now they're everywhere if you're a Jehovah's Witness. And bear in mind how many Jehovah's Witnesses there are. It's inevitable, given the amount of video material they're pumping out, it's inevitable that these men are going to get a kind of celebrity status. And the drawback of being any kind of celebrity is that more people will recognize you. And in Tony Morris's case, with millions of people familiar with his likeness that's no exaggeration of course he's going to get spotted so this it was inevitable that this exact thing was going to happen at some point and you can be sure it's going to happen again maybe not with him but maybe with another another governing body member the more people know what you look like and especially if you're making a name for yourself as an arrogant pig-headed small-minded homophobic asshole People are going to recognize you when you nip to the booze store on a Sunday morning. So in, it's fascinating for me that, again, this was inevitable. 
it feels to some degree like karma and I was debating whether to use this opportunity to send a message to Tony because it's it's basically inevitable isn't it that he will be watching this very video so I've debated whether to remind him that shunning is wrong and cruel and immoral and that if the organization were to get rid of it they would actually be doing themselves a favor because they would make Jehovah's Witnesses more credible as a religion there would be fewer reasons to call it a cult this would mean more members could be attracted even if they may lose a few members who would take the opportunity to escape I thought about talking about how despicable it is that he and his colleagues are still refusing to implement rudimentary reforms to protect children that due to his failure to act and his negligence and his covering up of child sex abuse there are children being molested now thanks to him and his colleagues i thought about talking about how his ignorant uneducated reading of bible passages on blood and those of his forebears have led to and are leading to the deaths of thousands of his own um, fellow worshippers i thought about talking about all of that but quite frankly i think that would be falling on deaf ears so perhaps it would be better to pursue the philosophy of if you can't beat them you should join them so tony morris cheers